Hello, America. Welcome to a very special edition of the Glenn Beck Program. It was 40 days and 40 nights ago that thousands of people stood together at the Lincoln Memorial, and I didn't know how many people would come. I just knew that I was supposed to stand there and challenge you to tell you that um, it was time to be better than we've allowed ourselves to become. When I came around the corner, we had to, we, we had to be in these uh, chutes because of uh, security, so couldn't really see anything in the crowd. And as I came out of one of these chutes and around and I saw the crowd, the crowd was a mile long. Went from the Washington Monument all the way to the Lincoln Memorial, a mile. It was a magical day. I wish, if you weren't there, I, I, I wish I could explain it or others could. I know we, we have a uh, documentary that is um, at glenbeck.com now showing the, the making of it and, and all the behind the scenes, but it's still, it, that is such an amazing documentary, but it still doesn't capture the feeling that was there. I challenge people to restore honor in this country. People have mocked it now in the media. They say, when did we lose our honor? Oh, I don't know. When we started lying to ourselves and lying to each other and lying in business and government. The way to restore our country is to look at the small, to fix the things in ourselves that are broken first. I reissued re a, a call um, on that day to take the 40-day, 40 40-night 40 challenge. I expanded it to this, a blueprint for national survival to fill your life with faith, hope, and charity. Fill your children's lives with it. I, um, I tell you, I, I, I don't know what the future holds. Um, and the words of Abraham Lincoln keep coming back to me. The world will little remember what we say here, but they will remember what we do here, paraphrasing Lincoln. It's what we do that makes a difference. If we can just fix ourselves, our children are watching us, and maybe they will see us do something, and they will change the course of history, the giants that are inside of our children. Our children are watching. I feel as though we need to look at our children as clay pots, that all of the things that we thought were true, that everybody believed in, that America was a good place. We've made mistakes, but it was a good place. That, that it was the entrepreneur. It was freedom. That, that, that you, you can live side by side with people that are different than you. You can. Do you remember when we were growing up? Maybe it's just my family. We grew up, I don't ever remember hearing conversations of politics. I don't ever remember hearing them. I, I know there were people that my parents disagreed with, but no, we didn't define ourselves through Republican and Democrat back then. When did that happen to us? And is there a way back? Tonight we have an audience full of Americans who accepted this challenge on 828. We're going to hear some of the incredible stories throughout the hour, but let's first look back at the challenge that one individual at a time, one pledge at a time, is restoring America. From the launch to now. Today marks 40 days and 40 nights until 828. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years. Noah, rain, 40 days, 40 nights. It's good cleansing time. So I want to ask you to join me on something. Make a commitment to do these three things for the next 40 days and 40 nights. Change your life. First one on faith. Pray. Find your relationship with God. Pray on your knees every night. The second thing is hope. Hope comes from truth. You can't expect honesty from others if you don't give it to them yourself. Stop all lies for the next 40 days. And the third one is charity. Remember that it begins at home. Do something kind for every member of your family at least once a week. Let's use these next 40 days and nights to prepare ourselves to show people who we really are. I gave a 40-day challenge on the air 
40 days ago today. My challenge to you today is to make a choice. Does America go forward and the American experience expands or does the experiment fail with us? If you pledge to yourself that you will restore honor in your own life, we will leave freedom better than how we found it. Dear Glenn, charity is something I need more of, and the 40-day challenge has been a good wake-up call to me. By no small miracle, I found myself in attendance at 828. Me, just a guy from Montana with a wife and three kids. I could have floated off the National Mall that day. On that day, I started my 40-day challenge to get myself back where I need to be in my life. Brian Wilson, Corvallis, Montana. My wife and very best friend in the world, I lost on August 16th after 39 years of marriage to breast cancer. I laid her to rest on the 27th, and your challenge gave me hope and focus, and God's love was there to catch me during my time of great sadness. I was able to challenge my sadness into hope by being on a bus the evening of the 27th and on the mall thanking God for what he was doing. I want to thank you, a voice crying in the wilderness for me. Bill Fairweather, Columbus, Ohio. Since I've taken this challenge, I actually do find myself praying more. So I pray for our troops and I pray for people in Washington to do the right thing. Faith, hope, and charity, I think it's basically made me a better man. My name is Alton R. Brown. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm, I'm an ex-Marine. I remember taking an oath in front of Old Glory to give my life for this nation. And it's breaking my heart to see my nation basically going down the tubes. So I'm ready to serve my nation again in whatever capacity. One man can change the world. That man or woman is you. You make the difference. I swear to you, I, I think my staff today is trying to kill me because they, they didn't tell me of these things in advance. And uh, my job is humbling. I want to, um, I want to start here. With the audience, 22 people have taken the challenge. Seven attended 828, 17 didn't. 10 are politically active in our audience, 13 are not. Who took, who took the challenge? Now, I want to ask, why? Anybody want to start? Why'd you take it? Lisa. Focus and clarity. Um, I send out an email to 2,000 people every day, and it was all over the place. And these, this challenge has allowed me to have such a focus. Um, it allows a two-way communication. God's leading me to get out information and educate. And I can't thank you enough. No, no, please. OK, who else? Why'd you take it? Tony. I don't believe we have the answers. I believe the answers. God has the answers. So I believe this is a way to draw closer to God and humbly pray for his presence in our nation to return us to the nation that he wants us to be. You know, I have to tell you, um, that is the biggest thing, and that's the thing I learned on 828. Um, I didn't know what I was going to say um, until that week. Uh, it was two nights before that I decided what I was going to say. I said I have to challenge them um, to, to, to change their lives. and. Um, I, I didn't even know what 828 was supposed to be. And, you know, I think God just has us figure it out as we go along, but we have to be in a place to where we can hear him. And I know that people will make fun of that and, you know, whatever. But as, as people came up to me over, you know, I said a minute ago that my job is humbling. My job is also a little frightening at times because I'm no different than you. I'm just a guy 
who finds myself in a remarkable situation and people ask me, what do we do? I don't have any, I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. So I'm just looking for the answers myself. Marie. I was lost. I was so into my job that I had forgotten what was important in life. I hadn't been to church in 10 years. I hadn't prayed. I had a wonderful husband, stepson, children, my own children. I didn't know what this country stood for anymore. I didn't know what I stood for. And now I'm starting to find myself. Mm. And there's such peace. Our family is coming together so beautifully. It's really remarkable. Who has, who has learned something about themselves that has surprised them? Nobody's learned anything about? This is, uh, this is Robert Geiger. He's an auto mechanic. He took the 40 day and 40 night challenge. What did you learn about yourself, Robert? I learned that I wasn't a terrible person. That you weren't what? A terrible person. I took the challenge mostly for my wife. I've treated her horribly for years. I've been carrying around anger, and I've shut myself down, and I've been blaming her for everything. And I've seen our marriage slipping away, and I woke up one day and my heart was breaking. And I haven't even told her this yet. I was going to take her out to dinner this weekend and tell her all this. And I just want her to forgive me for all the pain I've caused her over the years, and I hope she gives me the chance to make it up to her for the rest of our lives. Why? What, what, what made you believe that you, what made you believe that you were a bad person or you, you had to be the person that you were? Uh, Is it just life that just kind of? Well, it, when I was seven, my father got sick. And I didn't see him for almost a year at all, hardly. And then he died when I was only 20. I never got a chance to be a friend to him. And we were, <sighs> but he was a very strong man, and he, his faith in God was unshakable. And I didn't know that until 828. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. I thought anger and a hard heart was strength. Who, who was, we have such a s strange understanding of strength in this country, I think. You know, asking for forgiveness is strength, saying, I, I'm weak and I need help, but I don't need you to pick me up. I just, I just need help. That's strength. That's real strength. Who here found um, the well of anger going away or being tempered? Did anybody else find that? Uh, your name is uh, Rowena? Yes. Hi, Rowena. What did you... Um, I, I found after taking this challenge, I... I primarily walked around a pretty angry person um, and I was a fr because of my political views and I often was challenged and found myself in these situations or debates with family members and friends, longtime friends and um, I was apolitical my whole life and then um, you know, I took this challenge, and it's actually made me more mindful of, of my actions, my decisions, what to say, their reactions to me, and um, I'm not as angry anymore. It's amazing. I really am not. Um, I used to actually hold a lot in. I didn't want, I lived this lie because I'm from California. Ooh. <laughs> I live in New York now. Ooh. I mean, so two I, strikes. I, two strikes, and I think you're out on those two. So you know what I mean, but I've been living this lie. I, I didn't want to say what my true views were because I didn't want backlash from anybody. And then I just got tired of it, and now I feel freer, and I'm not as angry, and it's not so bad, you know? Just you know, it's, um, it out. It's, um, I... I I'm at the beginning of a journey where I'm I'm learning so much new so many new things. Please, please, at least rent the movie on Gandhi. But read about Gandhi. Yeah. 